Um, so this is going to be a workflow uh, with three parts. It's going to be InfoWorks for Architects. We're going to look at how you can gather data from various resources and then utilize them in Autodesk software, then convert the data to use in your design proposals, and then finally present and analyze uh, that information to your customers, uh, confirm the planners that your buildings or whatever you're proposing for landscape designs actually work. So um, there's going to be a lot of software uh, shown in this presentation, and I've got an iTunes card at the end, so I'll be asking some questions about the software. Um, the first section for data gathering, section one, is going to be covering uh, tools like Recap, which we just saw from the last presentation, uh, Autodesk Civil 3D, Raster Designer, uh, Formit, uh, which is our, our cloud technology that runs on the iPads, uh, and also a little bit of SketchUp and uh, a Near Map. The second section is going to cover design. This is the fun part where you can start uh, bringing in your Revit data, working with tools like 3ds Max, again, Formit, uh, working with some of the in-product tools in InfoWorks 360, and also pulling down some data from Autodesk Seek. The third and final part will cover the analysis and presentation. So we're going to be looking again at uh, doing a lot of that in InfoWorks 360, but also utilizing some of the tools that you can use inside of 3ds Max uh, using Autodesk Airflow to simulate wind wake patterns around the building, and also doing some little post-production with uh, shadows in Autodesk Pixlr. So section one is gonna be data gathering, and we're gonna be looking at these uh, five products. So we're gonna be using, for our coordinate systems, uh, Civil 3D, aerial imagery, we're gonna be capturing this information from Nearmap. We're gonna be capturing uh, shape files from a free website called BB Bike. Uh, we're also going to be doing our conceptual design uh, and our context uh, buildings. We're going to capture that from Format and from SketchUp. And then we're going to touch on what you can do with some of the, uh, the recap laser data to convert it into actual surfaces, land XML data. Uh, so to kick off, um, this is the MGA56. This is the map grid of Australia uh, for this region, for New South Wales. And uh, coming from the architectural side of the business, this is kind of new to me. Um, I've spent a lot of time working with our civil team, uh, getting, getting to grips with this. So this is really important. Like wherever you locate your building in the world, it has different types of coordinate systems. So for this region, we use the MGA56 and we're using the 1994 uh, GDA. So this is really important when you're gonna be configuring all this data and then aligning it. It's gonna uh, count, count for quite a lot here. Um, so in, uh, in Civil 3D and InfoWorks 360, to find the setup for uh, the, uh, the map grid of Australia, you can go uh, and right click on one of the settings in Civil 3D and then configure uh, that setting for MGA56. And again, when you set up your InfoWorks 360 project, you're gonna set it up to uh, those coordinate systems. And then all that data that we gather, whenever we bring it in or drag and drop it in, it's always gonna come in at the correct uh, coordinates. Uh, so this is the setup for uh, doing this workflow inside of Civil 3D. So for those of you who uh, maybe have an infrastructure design suite, you'll get access to Civil 3D built on AutoCAD platform. And it's gonna have in the tool, uh, toolbar there, the right click uh, to bring up these settings. And then there's gonna be all these different types of uh, geolocations that you can choose from. So you filter through to Australia and then you choose the map grid of Australia, uh, GDA 94. Um, the other thing that uh, we're going to be capturing is uh, aerial imagery from Nearmap. This is a really great resource. Uh, you can sign up for a subscription, and you can bring down uh, really high-resolution aerial imagery, which is also geared up for the uh, MGA56. Uh, one thing to note here is when you capture this imagery, we want to use this as the base of our model. So you want to get the imagery that's, uh, say, shot at midday, so there's uh, the least amount of shadows possible. So the image we have uh, on uh, the right is the, the, the winter or the, the long sun at the end of the day. We don't want that because that's going to make our model look dark. We want to use the uh, slider. So on the top right-hand corner here, we have a slider, and we can actually go back a few uh, months or a few years and then get the right resolution of the image that we want to use in our model. Uh, when you're done, you simply just uh, choose the area you want to capture. Uh, and you can see here again, we're looking at that location as being the MGA56. So we're getting the right real world coordinates. And then you can choose the resolution. So you can get some really sharp aerial imagery uh, from this website. Uh, so of course, being the architect, I want to choose the highest resolution because I want to look as sharp as possible. Uh, but you can filter down to uh, less resolution depending on um, the strength of your machine and, and how big the model is. So you simply just save the file. And this is the workflow to bring it into Civil 3D. Uh, I'm using the raster tool, so uh, the, the raster application comes with uh, all of the suites. This is just the add-in uh, inside of Civil 3D. 
I go to uh, set up my coordinates. So I'm just dropping down to choose Australia. Uh, then I drop down to choose the map grid of Australia. There's a lot there, so it's important to know what the coordinates are to use. Uh, we now go to the raster designer, and we're going to bring in that aerial image from near map. And it knows exactly where it is in the real world. We can check the x, y coordinates, which uh, map to the northings and eastings. We bring it in and insert it, and now we have um, a correct geo-referenced uh, file. I'm just creating a polyline around uh, that map, and I'm going to do map export. And this creates a shape file, which I can bring into InfoWorks, and I can use this for my model extents. So it's a really uh, powerful workflow to get the, the base of your site set up and make sure everything is in the right location. Uh, a couple of uh, picks and clicks there. These are all very sped up. Every video I show here is going to be on the Autodesk uh, ANZ YouTube channel. So if you want to see the full detail workflow with uh, voiceover, um, I encourage you to check it out. This is uh, also an InfoWorks. When I bring it in and I want to set up my model, this is in the Model Builder tool, I can set my extents from that shape file that we created in Civil 3D. So a really powerful way to, to set up that site. Uh, model Builder is part of the, uh, the full InfoWorks 360 application. Um, but you can set this up and it will create uh, a model, a basic model for you to start working off. It pulls down all that GIS data, uh, but you can set it to that near map extents. Um, I've had about four double espressos today, so bear with me. Um, another great site where you can pull down data from is BB Bike. Uh, this is like a, a cycling website, and there's a, a huge amount of data that you can uh, download for free. So what I've got here is uh, just the BB Bike website, and I want to extract the, uh, the shape files, the Esri shape files. And what I've got here uh, for this extents, I've chosen similar extents to my site, which is actually based in Martin Place. Um, I'm going to be bringing down um, the building footprints, some of the land use data, the roads, some of the underground data, and it all comes down as shape files, which I can bring into Civil 3D and to InfoWorks 360. Um, so these are the shape files you're going to get. Um, the key ones you're looking for when you want to bring them into uh, Civil 3D or to InfoWorks is to go for the SHP file, but you'll get numerous other file formats that you can download from the site for other applications. Um, another great way to, to bring in data is, is laser scanning. Um, so this is a, uh, a scan done by our very own uh, Brett Casson. He, uh, he asked me to, to mention his name for this. And uh, he was using pos Position Partners equipment. And he's done this fantastic scan of uh, the site that I'm looking at, which is 60 Martin Place. So um, in the last presentation, uh, we talked about the accuracy of the measuring tools, um, being able to see the panorama uh, views inside the mirror balls, being able to capture information, annotate, et cetera. Um, one of the things you can do, of course, you can bring it into Revit, but you can also bring it into Civil 3D. So a workflow I have here is uh, bringing it in, uh, locating it to the real world coordinates. You can bring it in manually and align it so you can remember your northings and eastings and then use those as your X, X Y, and Z coordinates. Uh, you can locate that in your Civil 3D application. And then we've got this great subscription add-in which will convert the laser scan to a surface. So if anybody's used, uh, say, the site designer add-in in Revit, uh, the first thing you see on the left-hand side of the tab is import land XML. This is how you can convert a laser scan into land XML and then use it inside Site Designer. So uh, I'm going to show you the workflow here. Um, also, you'll note on the uh, right-hand side of the screen, you can see the topography information is showing from that, that data that we've converted. So the workflow we have is to uh, bring in our laser scan information. So again, it's a subscription add-in. So it's an RCS or an RCP point cloud laser scan. Uh, we're going to bring it in. Uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, just do 0, 0, for the, the purpose of the demonstration. And we're going to go and uh, maybe clip that down a little bit. If you leave all the information on the towers, it's going to uh, sort of skew the data a little bit, and you're going to have these big jagged points. So you're best to sort of clip it down. The, the tool we have here, this is the uh, tool that converts the point cloud data to a surface. I'm just using some basic settings. We're going to use the, uh, the, the cowering uh, workflow. That converts it, and then when we want to uh, see the information isolated, so I'm just going to unload the reference point cloud scan. When we isolate it and uh, see that information, we now have uh, surface data. So this is a great way to, again, use uh, laser scanning data with this add-in to convert it into surface data, which you can export out as a land XML. And this will also work in InfoWorks 360. So you can bring in land XML to InfoWorks 360 and also uh, Revit Site Designer. So in Revit, with the Site Designer add-in, um, this is part of subscription. It's available now for 2016. I can bring in that information. I'm going to go by the survey coordinates, bring it in, or you can do auto center, center or origin and move it around. 
bring it in, and then you're going to have this topography information to work off. So that's just one thing you can do with point cloud data with these add-ins that you get as part of your subscription. Um, the next thing is bringing in the BB bike uh, shape files. Because they're based on real-world coordinates, you can just drag and drop them in, and they're going to come in, in the right location. You can still manually, manually import them using the map uh, import command, as shown here. And then we can start to check all that geo-reference data inside of Civil 3D before we go into InfoWorks 360. So we're bringing it in all at the right location. We've got the shape files, so you can see the uh, purple points, uh, the building footprints. We've got the splines that denote the uh, roads. We've got the near map image and the laser scan point cloud data right there in the center for our chosen site. Um, the next thing is uh, pulling down other file formats. So uh, SketchUp is um, a really powerful tool for doing quick conceptual modeling. Um, there's uh, the uh, 3D warehouse where you can uh, download a lot of files for free. Um, you can bring this information directly into InfoWorks. However, um, we hear this a lot. Um, when I bring in my SketchUp data natively, the textures are missing. So um, you can actually export out from SketchUp as a DAE file, but if you don't have access to SketchUp, um, you can bring it into Max. The Max file will open and read all the texture files, and then you can export it out as a DAE or an FBX file, and that will uh, hold the uh, texturing data inside of that model. And you can also clean it up as well. Sometimes uh, some of the Google Earth uh, aerial maps come through. So if you need to clean it up, uh, Max is a fantastic tool uh, to clean up that data before going into InfoWorks. Um, another fantastic tool is uh, Formit, uh, Formit 360. This works on an iPad, it will work on an Android phone, it works on your web browser. Um, this is getting a lot of development. If you haven't looked at this for a while, uh, check out the new web browser version. There's some really cool tools for doing more advanced modeling. Uh, what I can do here is I can go and bring in the aerial imagery, start messing up my building, and then I can bring it into Max if I want to do detailed texturing. There's also some new workflows that are going to be coming through with the OBJ file format that could hold some of this data. Um, the team's still working on it. But this is a, a model that I made inside a format. Um, so I just type in my site location. Um, so this is 60 Martin Place. And I bring in that aerial imagery. It's got the XYZ gizmos, um, the units. You're going to flick from imperial to metric. It always starts off with the imperial units because it's American. Um, we can align and rotate uh, the grid to suit our building as well. And then it's as simple as drawing over the top and plan, clicking it once, and extruding it to the height. So very quickly, we can start to uh, mass up our contextual buildings. And then uh, we can also uh, take photographs. We can adjust the photographs in Autodesk Pixlr. That's a, a free. Uh, Photoshop-like uh, application on the cloud where you can start to tidy up those images. And then we can save this out as an RVT file or an OBJ file, bring it into 3ds Max, and then start to align these textures, export them out as a DAE. And uh, you want to bake all the information in there. And then this is the preview inside InfoWorks, interactive placing, and now we have one of our site context buildings. Um, when you fire up InfoWorks for the first time, again, it's all about the settings. So I mentioned the NGA, uh, GDA94. Um, you're going to make sure that all these settings are configured before you fire up the model. You can't just get into the application and start doing anything you want. Uh, so you're going to give it a name. You're going to set the model extents. You don't necessarily have to do this, but if you've got the near map data, you can actually set it with the near map data. So that's a great way to set the, uh, the out boundary of your, of your actual site model. Um, the other one I'm doing here in the advanced settings, because I've got uh, coordinate systems, I'm setting it all to that GDA, um, sorry, MGA 56. And uh, it, by default, it's going to start on the right, sa right hand side of the road. So make sure you set it to, again, from imperial to metric, and make sure you're driving on the left hand side of the road. And with that, you're ready to go. So um, natively, inside of InfoWorks 360, you can bring in numerous file formats. Uh, sometimes to bring in some of the file formats, uh, you have to have other Autodesk applications installed. So under the hood here, um, under the application options, you can go to the data import and just make sure you turn on the, uh, the Navisworks and the Civil 3D based, based import, and then the data is going to come in uh, nice and clean. Uh, you can see you can bring in Revit data natively, um, Land XML, Point Cloud, Raster, SketchUp. So with all that data gathering, we can bring this in. We're bringing it in based on that real-world coordinate system. So we've got near map, BB bike, point cloud data, format and SketchUp data. And this is what we're getting instantly um, from our first uh, run in InfoWorks. 
So moving into um, the fun part, this is the design, design part where we can, as architects, we can start testing our ideas, putting them in context, um, you know, creating nice civic spaces. Um, this is where we're going to move into, again, using uh, Formit. This is a very easy tool to use. Um, bringing in a Revit file natively so it aligns in the exact right location based on that MGA56. Uh, we're going to do some really cool furniture in 3ds Max and uh, also add some people to populate that furniture and other bits and pieces. And then uh, show where you can get some things like trees, just simple things like trees from Autodesk Seek. Um, there's the XFrog library, and you can download trees for free to be used inside of Infoworks. So um, when I was uh, an architect, which I'm still recovering from, uh, we used to do a lot of options. I worked in the UK, and we started off with like seven options, and we filtered down to five options, three options, one option. So um, Format is a fantastic tool to do these options because it's so easy and simple to use. A director in your company who never wants to touch software may have an iPad or a powerful smartphone. They can still open up a Format model and just do push and pull and extrude. So they can be part of the BIM process where they can sketch it, they can bring in their aerial imagery, um, they can do numerous uh, options. And in the pro version, you've got conceptual energy analysis and also uh, solar analysis. So for the, the old Fasari users, we've actually re retired the application. All the technology, uh, or a lot of the technology from Fasari will be coming into to Format Pro. Um, you can save it out as an, uh, an RVT file, but you can also save it out as an OBJ and just bring that down directly into your software. So the, these are some of the verified views that I've created inside of the site model. And I can just bring them in and set them up as design options inside the application save the camera or bookmark the camera locations and then see the impact of that design on the skyline. And this is a great tool to communicate to other stakeholders, um, heritage consultants, planners, anybody who has uh, interest in the impact of this building, you can do this very quickly with the former models. So uh, the workflow I have here, these are the, the saved bookmark views. So I can save several key, key views. I could save 100 key views here if I need to. And I can just click on those bookmarks and it's going to take me to my location. Um, that's the Revit tower I've got, but I want to flick back to, say, um, option one or option two. I just drop down, and I can see the impact of that building in the skyline. The other one here is uh, Carl Bass's face, texture mapped onto a twisty building. You can do that as well. You can bring down the, the former data. You can uh, open up a Max and then just drag and drop a texture, any texture you want, maybe not Carl Bass's face. So that's a simple uh, way of doing your design options inside of Infoworks. Um, so the, the next part is um, bringing in the, the Revit model. So um, how many people have had to set up um, the base point and the survey points inside of Revit? A couple. How many have struggled with it? More than a couple. OK. So um, what you want to do is you want to uh, bring in this information that you gathered from the MGA56 coordinate system. So it's the northings and eastings, um, also your elevation and your angles. You want to set up that project uh, base point. When you type in the information, make sure you hit M after typing it in in the XYZ coordinates, um, because it was, everything sort of works in meters. And then duplicate um, that uh, site shared coordinate system. And then we're going to use this to cross-check it in Civil 3D. Um, there are numerous workflows on this. Um, this is just one of them, but um, this is a good, good thing to, to, to get familiar with. Um, so when we export it out and we want to cross-check it, we're just going to export out a DWG, and we're going to make sure that in the units and coordinates, we're going to use the meters, because uh, Civil 3D guys work in meters. Uh, and we're going to make sure we're taking out that shared uh, coordinate system. So when we XREF it in, and we're bringing it in, and we're looking at it um, with all the other data, we can link it in, check it, and we can see that the building is aligned with the site survey information. A um, couple of things to note here when you bring the Revit data in, um, you're going to be bringing it in, um, like you go to your data sources, you double click on the Revit, uh, import it. It may take a little bit of time just to configure it before it comes in. Uh, you're going to choose the coordinate system as being the MGA56. And uh, a new thing that we have here is you can simplify the model. So if you've got a really detailed model, that might be a bit too heavy to bring in. Um, you can choose to simplify it, so it starts off at 100%, and you can bring it down to like 25%, for example, and uh, you can simplify that model before loading it in. These, these files can get really big, so it's a good, good tip. Um, also, with curtain walling, if you get really advanced with curtain walling, I tried to do something kind of cool. I wanted to do like a little Autodesk store here. Um, I used the spider clip, the planar type uh, glazing. Um, it had a few odd results. So you can see the curtain walling sort of jumping out in places. So make sure it's simple to begin with. Um, if you want to try and uh, have a workaround for this, 
Um, we have Navisworks Simulate in uh, all of the building design suite premiums. You can bring it into Navisworks and you can see the same buildings coming in cleanly. And from Navisworks, you can export it out as an FBX file and that data is going to transfer through. Also, if you're getting numerous file formats from other uh, consultants, collaborators, uh, Navisworks opens 56 different file formats. So you can bring it in, convert it to an FBX and then bring it into Infoworks. Um, a bit of inspiration here. Um, I wanted to do something sort of interesting with the landscape design and look at the hardscape uh, features. So this is the uh, Millennium Park in Chicago, and this is really cool uh, sculpture, which has animated faces and, and water pouring out of their mouths. Uh, so I decided to do a Carl Bass one. Uh, so this is just a basic modeling uh, feature inside of 3ds Max. You just uh, draw the boxes, you bring in the textures, and just drag and drop them on. And then you've got a basic uh, animated feature here. Uh, so that's it inside of uh, Infoworks 360. Um, you can just drag and drop it in and uh, interactively place it and rotate it and scale it. I'm still working on how to uh, get the water animated. Um, maybe at Vegas, some, I may have that worked out. But that's just uh, one thing you can do with, say, hardscape uh, design. The other one is, um, of course, you can bring in your, your SketchUp data as well. So maybe there's a, a huge amount of SketchUp data. You can add these to your style palettes. Um, I prefer to work in Max. It's sort of my, my favorite modeling tool. You can make some really simple um, polygon modeling geometry. So I've just done some of my street furniture and my rubbish bins. Uh, you can bring these in, you can simplify them, and you can also add them to the style palette inside of Infoworks. So once they're added in there, then you can reuse the data on projects after projects after projects. So not, it's not just a one-time import, you can add it to, to that um, uh, library. Um, inside Infoworks, there's some really powerful tools for doing uh, streets, buildings, and furniture. So I'm not a road designer, but I can intuitively pick up this tool quite simply for doing my streets or maybe my, uh, my malls or my um, walkways. Um, you've got a great graphical interface, like a gaming type interface, so you'll see the textures and all the furniture and the markings. So you can bring up that uh, style palette, edit that street, add all the street furniture that you typically see. Um, you can add all the textures as well. There's also numerous buildings that ship with the application, but there's also a building generator tool as well, um, and I'll be showing a bit of that later today at the Autodesk stand, uh, where you have uh, 3D facades, and there's even a way to get under the hood to manipulate these 3D facades to give you much more realistic looking buildings. Uh, and then here on the, uh, the right hand side is the furniture, so by default there's a lot of Americanized uh, sort of rubbish bins and, and uh, uh, food outlets, uh, but you can bring in your own customized ones and then add that to the style palette. So it's very easy to bring in all your own customized data and then use it for design purposes in Infoworks. Um, the next thing is uh, working with uh, Populate, like animated people. How many people have linked their models in, uh, from Revit to Max and then used the Populate tool? <laughs> One. <laughs> okay, this is really easy to use. So you see all those cool movies like Avatar and um, uh, I was going to say Dancers with Smurfs is the code name for Avatar. Um, all, the tool, all the tools that are in the uh, movie business, some of them are coming through into uh, 3ds Max. So this is the Populate tool. It's just a point and shoot tool. And these characters are all rigged, ready to go. So I can just uh, uh, start off. There's another one you can do. You can do butterflies. Um, uh, check out the Autodesk Knowledge Network for this download. You can go here um, and you can go to the 3ds Max downloads. There are thousands of files pre-rigged and ready to go that you can download for free. Um, people, scenes, um, butterflies, cars. Uh, you can bring them in and they're rigged and ready to go. And you can just bring your river models in there, bring in the butterflies and have them flooding around the house. Um, if you guys want to see more on this, again, uh, come to the stand. Uh, working with the populate data, it's as simple as uh, bringing the people. You can even adjust the texture on their face if you want to go for high resolution. Uh, you can uh, bring in people standing, sitting, and then you hit play down the bottom right here, and they're animated, ready to go. You can even go to the bo bone modifier and actually uh, edit what you want, want them to do with their hands. And there's some new features in the 2016 Max, which allows you to put um, items in their hands and hats and backpacks and stuff. Uh, when you export it out, make sure you take it out as a DAE, DAE and then bake the animation, because that's going to register inside of Infoworks, and you're going to see these people moving around. So here's the preview of those people in, uh, uh, inserted. It's not perfect. Um, they kind of float around a little bit because there's no bone modifier um, acceptance inside of Infoworks. But you can still bring in animated people which kind of look okay from a distance. So uh, you go to your visual effects, turn on animation, and this is how they're going to look. Uh, I think you can see the butterflies in there landing on someone's head. Um, so there's all these different cool things you can do inside of Max. You don't have to be an expert. You can go to the site and download all this stuff and then utilize it inside of Infoworks 360. 
Um, the other thing is, is trees. Um, I remember like on a lot of projects, you've got to have trees and grass and you want you know, parks and all the rest. And it's very hard to try and do that fully inside a Revit. We've got the RPC content, but it doesn't look that great. Um, InfoWorks has a really powerful uh, tree application. So there's uh, hundreds of trees that you can use. You can also randomize the trees. So um, I couldn't actually record this. I'll, I'll show this at the stand today. Um, this is the randomized tree tool. So you go into a, sta a strand of trees that's so just drawing a polygon. It fills it with trees, but they're all the same. You can go and set up a style rule. Um, you have to delete the original manual style, create the style rule, randomize the trees, and then run this, and then it will change all the trees. So some are a little bit yellow, light green, dark green, and you'll get a nice uh, visual effect of uh, randomized trees. Um, so this is the result you get. Um, and uh, you can see here, I can start to get some nice uh, textures of trees, and because it's built on a gaming engine, I don't need to render anything out, so they look great to begin with. Um, and there are thousands of leaves in there. Uh, InfoWorks is really powerful at, at reading this information. Um, this is the new grass texture as well. Um, you actually find this, uh, this one under materials, under terrain. It's a seamless texture. So whenever you're texture mapping um, your models, um, sometimes there's the, the repetitive textures. This one is a seamless texture tool. So you can go and do grass for, for thousands of miles, and it's always going to look uh, like grass should, as opposed to laid out bits of AstroTurf. Um, the other thing is, I get asked, is where are the Australian trees? Right? Like it's all Americanized or UK trees. So you can go to Autodesk Seek. Um, so you can get Revit models from here as well. But uh, XFrog have donated 31 trees for you to download for free. Um, open it at max, save it out as a DAE or an F FBX, and then use it inside of uh, InfoWorks. Um, you can also go to the XFrog website where there are whole big bundles uh, of all different native trees from around the world. So this is a great way if you're having to work with certain regions of the world or certain parts of Australia, you can get this data and have the trees looking Australian as opposed to American. So the final part here, um, and I think we're doing okay for time, is the analysis and presentation. So we're going to be talking about uh, 3ds Max uh, for doing animated text, uh, doing cars using the add-in 3ds Max called Civil View. We're going to be looking at shadow overlays, so the differences between Tower Option 1 and Tower Option 2. Um, we want to look at the difference between the shadows it casts. We can use Autodesk Pixlr to do that. And uh, another tool which was based on Project Falcon technology, which was in labs a while back for Revit. This is the Autodesk Airflow application, where you can bring your building in as an FBX and then look at the wind wake around your uh, particular design. And then finally, we're going to finish off with the fun stuff, which is the animation, which you can do in minutes inside of InfoWorks 360. So um, I was watching uh, an Autodesk University presentation from Vegas online uh, a few months back, and some guy did this using AutoCAD, and it was just so painful. Don't, don't, don't go the AutoCAD uh, route with text use Max or maybe use Revit, but uh, this is a very fast way to do it. If you go online and see some of the previous presentations, I felt so sorry for this guy having to do it. 3D text is so simple. Um, also to mention, we've just updated Max extension 1 with some really powerful text function functionality. Um, all I do here is I go to the text editor, it's just based on a, on a spline or a shape. Um, I'm just going to give it a size, type in the street name I want, go to my modify, extrude it, um, give it an amount. I'm working in centimeters in this particular workflow. Create a yellow material, drag and drop it. Uh, make sure you put the materials on it so the colors transfer through. Otherwise, they won't transfer through by natively um, using the um, default uh, materials. So uh, this is the animation process. I select uh, the text. I have highlighted my auto key there for doing the animation. Um, what you probably didn't see, because this is really fast, is I'm adding um, the Z spinning around 359.9. Um, I'll show this at the stand as well, and it is on the Autodesk YouTube channel. Um, that's my 360 spinning text. Um, I save it out. I bake the animation. I bring it as a data source, check it inside the viewer. Um, I'm going to just do center on the map grid of Australia, apply. And now we have animated 3D text. You can also scale it as well inside of uh, InfoWorks. You don't have, to have everything perfect. You can scale it. And now we have uh, our people, our street signs, everything spinning around. It's as simple as that. Um, the next thing is vehicles. So um, inside of Max as well, uh, I believe you get for free the Civil View add-in. Um, so this is one where you can work with, say, the shape files that you extracted from BB Bike, like the roads. You can bring in those splines and then attach vehicles to them. And all these vehicles are free. Like there's hundreds of vehicles that you can load in uh, to the library. Um, what we're going to do is uh, look at using those vehicles and have them run on the roads inside of InfoWorks model. Um, another quick thing to note, though, is by default, Max, if you're working inside of the Viz environment, it defaults to Mentor Ray, which is the rendering engine that ships with it. 
Um, you want to flick back to the standard uh, ray trace rendering engine um, that works better with Infoworks. Um, Max has hundreds and hundreds of free scripts. Um, if anyone wants this, um, come see me, I'll give it to you. That's the script that converts the arch and design materials to default standard materials. So you don't need to manually do it, you just run the script, it goes and grabs all those objects and then converts them into standard materials for use in Infoworks. So this is the workflow, initialize civil view. It's a very simple tool to use. Um, we're just gonna pick the shape, so the BB bike shape, um, that's gonna form the, the road that the cars are gonna follow. I'm just gonna create a new object style. Uh, choose the car section, you've got Audis and Chevys, you've got trees and furniture, there's a lot of tools in here that you can use. Uh, I'm also gonna randomize it and uh, set the speed. So we want maybe 40 or 50 kilometers, you can set that. Um, you can randomize the cars as well, you don't need to manually sort of work this out. We say that style, we apply it, and now we have our cars and our scenes. So um, I'm not gonna say that one out, but you can save it again for future use. And then it also will configure the timeline down the bottom there. So you just hit play and the cars will follow that track. And then this is the script that I mentioned before, just run that script and that's now converted all the materials on the cars to standard design materials, which look better inside of Infoworks 360. So with that, we want to capture the animation. So it's a DAE, DAE export, um, not the FBX. Um, so Max will export numerous file formats and it's quite a powerful tool for changing file formats should you need to convert that data. Make sure you bake the animation and uh, then it comes into Infoworks 360 and I'll, I'll show this at the end. Um, one thing to note here is when you go to your visual effects and you want to see the animation features running, you have to turn on animation. There's also high visual quality. I always like to look at the models with really high definition and ambient occlusion. Um, if your models start to slow down, um, turn, turn that off because uh, it could sort of kill the machine. Um, so, but when you've got your final presentation, um, you can turn that on and see everything uh, running around your model. Um, so moving to the last two bits, this is the, the analysis part. So uh, we have uh, Autodesk Pixlr. It's a free web-based application that does pretty much the same as a, as a basic version of Photoshop. Um, I can set up uh, feature and terrain themes. So I want my shadows to be uh, really strong in my design options here. Um, and I want to do it, say, between 12 and 3 p.m. in April. And I want to look at all these different options side by side, but I want it to be really clear. So you can uh, add these feature and terrain themes to do a white overlay uh, to give you a clear definition of the shadows. So you don't need to go back and retexturize the models or anything. You can add all these themes and that will start to um, add better visual clarity here. Um, inside of Pixlr, you can uh, bring in the two different um, options and you can just add a, a multiply channel. So over there on the right hand side of the screen is we add the multiply and you can start to see where I've highlighted down there on the bottom right, the two different tower options. So it's a great way to communicate instantly what those uh, format towers are gonna look like what the shadows are gonna cast at certain times of the year. So anybody concerned about the impact of those designs, you can use these tools to communicate uh, the shadows that are cast. Uh, finally, uh, flow design. So from here, you can export out Infoworks data as FBX. So it's not just a one-way street. You can take it out and use it in other applications. We export out the FBX. You can do the entire model, or you can use the polygon tool just to take certain sections, because if you take the entire model, it could take some time. Um, we're gonna bring in the FBX file into Infoworks, and a quick note here is don't bring in the trees. So Infoworks handles all the trees fantastically, but uh, anything based on FBX and wind wake design, it's gonna really slow it down. So you can see here, mine was uh, slowing down quite a bit because I had all my trees, and uh, so don't do that. So uh, inside of this application, you've got um, a seed box, and this is the flow design going through the model. Um, if you want to get more accurate analysis, you want to have a lot more of the city context. Um, if you've about to, been out to a wind tunnel, they're, they're very long and they have these uh, little deflectors on the ground, they're like, they, they, they represent the turbulence. Um, you probably need to do that if you want to get better results. But for the, this, this demo, um, I just had a small part of the city. So I cropped the seed box and then I ran uh, a certain velocity setting. So you can set it up at 10, 20 meters per second. Um, you can have the arrows look the way you want them to look. Uh, and you can start to see the pressure on the faces of the building and then also the flow lines and how they're going to react to those shapes that the wind's coming through. Uh, you can also turn on ISO surfaces. This is more for um, internal spaces. Uh, this is if you're looking at HVAC systems for, for rooms. Um, looks kind of interesting there. Um, there's a nice blob in our city. And uh, you can also adjust the look and the feel. So being, being the recovering architect, I like everything to look pretty and, and graphically correct. So I turn on the highest settings possible and you can start to see here a lot more clearly um, where the high wind pressures are. Um, so over on the um, top, 
left hand side of the screen here, you can see that there's the velocity setting. So the yellow is the high pressure and the blue is the low pressure. And finally, I've got a video which should play. So this is the video. You can actually natively record this directly out of uh, Autodesk Flow Design. You don't need to take it out to another application or screen capture. So it will record out natively as an AVI, and you can start to leave it for a little bit longer, and it will start to process the calculations. So for anybody who used uh, Project Falcon on labs, uh, on, on labs, labs um, that's the coffee. Um, the longer you leave the, uh, the data to run, um, the more calculations it's going to do, and you're going to see more flow lines. So finally, um, presenting, um, there's a really easy storyboard player inside of InfoWorks 360. So if anybody who's used Showcase, that's got a storyboard tool as well, where you can bring in snapshots and link keyframes between them. Um, you can also do the shadow overlays. So I'm just showing a, a screenshot here of different shadow overlays for different times of the year. Um, it's very simple. Um, down the bottom uh, right-hand side there is the day of the year, the start time, the end time. Hit play, and it will run the shadow path uh, over that building in real time. And you can also export it out within minutes. You don't need to render anything. It just does it incredibly quickly. Um, the other one here is for actually the fly around of the building. So um, we've got some default uh, pre-rigged animations. Um, the easiest ones to use are the 360 spin arounds, like the orbits. You can also add still animations, camera paths, record the information, do pauses, set times between certain keyframes. It's really intuitive. You don't need to do a tutorial. You can pick this up within minutes. And uh, for a novice person wanting to do an animation, you can probably get out an animation within an hour. Like this. butterflies on in this one. Um, so that's just like a work in progress animation. Um, for those who want to see a more detailed one, um, I've got the model at the stand. I'm still working it up in a lot more detail. But I can render those out in minutes um, when I used to do it on Macs. So if you try and render out stuff in Revit, it takes hours. Um, so this is a really powerful uh, application for doing larger scale animations. So to, uh, to conclude, to recap on all the information, um, so coordinate systems using the MGA56 grid inside of Civil 3D. Aerial imagery from NearMap, they've got a stand here today. Um, it's a really good site for getting detailed information. Uh, free sites like BB Bike for the shape files, concept design for your contextual data, format and uh, SketchUp, and then using that recap laser scan to convert the data into LandXML surface files. Uh, design, again, using Format. Um, check out the web browser of Format. It's really powerful. You can bring Revit data in there now, like you can bring in all your families. Um, tower design, bringing in your Revit uh, model natively and locating in exact real-world coordinates. Furniture in 3ds Max. People using the Populate tool inside of 3ds Max. 
And also, if you need uh, native Australian trees, you can go to Autodesk Seek and get the XFROG library. Uh, and then finally, for this presentation and analysis section, uh, we're doing animated text inside of 3ds Max, uh, cars using that Civil View plugin for Max, and uh, the shadow analysis using Pixlr, which is the free application uh, based on the web browser, airflow design, similar to that Project Fal Falcon for doing the wind wake, and then the final output for the animation, which is incredibly fast inside of InfoX 360. Um, a reminder as well, um, a lot of people don't go to the site as much as what probably they, they're not aware of it as much. Um, the knowledge network is incredibly powerful. You can get all those free files for Macs. Um, you can download it from here. Um, there's a lot of information here about getting support, learning, and uh, a larger community of users. We also have uh, blogs, forums, screencasts. Um, a lot of the videos, um, the, the fast videos I showed today, are on the Autodesk ANZ YouTube channel. Um, and uh, you can also get help files, contributor content, and product support. And I think this is probably the first presentation we've ever finished on time. <laughs> okay, thank you.